Um, hello guys, my name is Altaf Hussain and welcome to Study Unicorn. And today we'll be learning the ACCA F4 paper, which is the global version. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I found, I was searching on YouTube for classes, but I couldn't find any. So I thought maybe my video will be helpful. And uh, before we start the video, I'll just let you know that I'm not any certified tutor from ECCA. I'm just a student myself <clears throat> and I've completed my foundation level papers, all three, and I'm on to the fourth one. So what I felt was whatever are my point of views, I can keep it in front of you and and by this we can be, we can improve our chances of passing the exams. So it's helpful for me as well as for you. So just watch this video till end. My this 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 is because the, this is basically the first chapter. Just watch this video till end, and if you find it useful, you can let me know, and then we will continue, or else it's the other way around. So let's start with the chapter. We'll just go through the contents of this textbook. There is a part A, part B. There are till part H. There are nineteen chapters. So we'll just do it slowly, slowly, like one by one. So we'll start with the first chapter, that is business, political, and legal systems. And uh, for your information, guys, I'm using the Kaplan 2021 edition, which I have downloaded from this website over here. So if you don't have, you can get yours from here. There is exam kit as well. So let's start our first chapter, that is the business political and legal systems. And this is all the guide and all that. I just lay this. Just go to the first chapter first. Come on. The party essential elements of legal system. Business, political and legal systems. This is basically the topic list and the reference list introduction. In this chapter, we will be looking at the overall context, economical, political, and legal, in which international law exists. There is no all encompassing global law as such. Instead, there are national legal systems of three kinds. That is the common law. There are three kinds of uh, legal systems we can see. There is common, one second, there is this common law, civil law, and sharia law. These may be contradictory, creating the problem of conflict of laws. Therefore, some model international laws have been put together by international organizations, such as the United Nations, to resolve the problem. In these ways, <clears throat> the relation between states and between individuals in different states are regulated. The kind of legal system used by a country depends on historical and cultural factors and to some extent on economical and political factors. Whatever the legal system, we will be looking in particular principles of law, sources of law, the role of judges. So we'll be looking at this in the chapter. So let's start with our chapter. Just go to this the concept of global law. There are some model international laws that regulate the relationship of sovereign states and their rights and duties with respect to each other. Most laws, however, consist of national laws, which nevertheless follow certain common methodologies. Okay. The, uh, always read the exam focus point as it is very helpful. Exam questions on the topics in this chapter are most likely to be looking to test your knowledge and understanding of distinctions and so are unlikely to be scenario based and you should not rule out the possibility of scenario questions being set though. Get it guys? So what we have to do over here is we have to, this chapter will basically test our knowledge of the uh, knowledge and understanding and it's not uh, that of a scenario based. So we just have to see, we just have to understand the chapter. So model international laws and exemplar international laws. 
although law is a global concept, basically, yeah, law is a global concept, it is usually organized on national lines and there is only a limited amount of truly international law. Basically, there is only a limited amount there is only a limited amount of truly international law. In this study text, we shall consider some national laws that have been examples for other countries developing their legal systems. Are, these may therefore indicate the practice of law in many countries worldwide. We shall also see the model laws that have been developed by international bodies Basically, the model law, the laws which have been developed by other international bodies and which have been adopted by various countries so that nations may interact with one another more easily. Basically, this is just the laws which are universal and uh, through which different countries can interact with each other. Got it. Okay. First of all, we shall look in general terms at how nations have ordered their own legal systems. We shall give examples of a number of nations, but we shall by no means be comprehensive in world terms. Attention. Attention. If you are studying in a country to which we do not make reference, find out the origins of your nation's legal systems so that you can compare it to the ones we lay out here. Remember that you are not going to be examined on any one national legal system. Rather, you will be examined on the principles of law that have international significance. Basically, guys, this is nothing. Just leave it. It's just saying that find out what is in your country and, and all that, but nothing comes in the exam. So, just leave it. Fast forward. There are three key legal systems or underlying methodologies of law operating in the world that have been adopted by different countries for different reasons. As we have told you in uh, earlier, there are three key legal systems underlying the methodology of law. That is the common law, civil law, and Sharia law. We'll just start with the common law first. Common law is a system named after a historic system formulated in England. Basically, this is an historical system formulated in England. The terminology associated with this system can be confusing. So the terminology can be confusing and you will find out that legal systems is named after one distinctive source of law within itself. But that the system comprises several sources of law. Common law systems developed in England, but have been exported to many British Empire and Commonwealth countries, notably for our purposes, the USA. Basically, this is uh, just brief introduction you will just by reading you can understand there is nothing to basically explain over here civil law civil law systems originate in continental europe so what we said over here the common law comes from historical system formulated in england but the civil law is formulated is originated in continental europe but have similarly been exported through world empires and so are equally prominent in other world areas. This, the civil law which was originated in Europe is exported all over the world. It's all over the world. And it's equally prominent in other world areas. So it's basically they are saying is it's equally important and everywhere it's same. For example, South America, civil law systems are much younger than common law ones although they come from equally old legal heritages. You can underline this one, equally old heritages. We shall now, we shall use France and Germany as examples of these systems. You can use France and, uh, you can use France and Germany as the examples first of these systems. Increasingly in modern terms, civil and common law systems share common elements, although historical differences still remain. There are still historical differences. That's what differentiate the common law from civil law. Then we come at Sharia law. Sharia law is significantly different from both. So basically Sharia law is nothing like common or civil law. It's significantly different from both common and civil law systems. It is a legal system bound up in the religion of Islam. This is a legal system which is bound up in the religion of 
in the religion of Islam, which makes it different in both purpose and practice. What is the distinguish the what distinguish the Sharia law from the common and civil law is the purpose and practice, because it has influence in many Islamic countries worldwide and has been adopted as a comprehensive legal system in some. We shall look at two countries where such adoption has taken place. That is the Pakistan and Iran. As Pakistan and Iran are Islamic countries. That's why we can take the examples of these for the Sharia law. Okay. So we are done. we are okay with the common law, civil law and Sharia law. There's nothing as uh, such difficult in this. So now we can see, now we can look at the effect of economics and political systems on legal systems. The effects of economics and political systems on legal systems. Business activity takes place within a particular economic. What's wrong with this? Today? Business activity takes place within a particular economic, political, and legal context. And each of these areas will affect each other to an extent. The economic and political context of each nation is not the same although many groups of nation are similar and therefore nations' legal systems vary considerably from one another. So basically they are saying is business activity is or takes place within a particular economic structure or political structure or legal and legal structure and each of these areas affect each other to an extent. To one certain limit they affect each other. And the economic and political context of each nation is not the same, although many groups of nations are similar. Basically, the economic and political uh, structures are not same in every nation. And uh, but they are to an extent they are similar. Therefore, national nations' legal systems vary considerably. So they are different from one to another. The differences between the nations in terms of economics, politics, and most importantly for the syllabus, law, can present problems for international trade. The differences between nations in terms of economics. One second, one second. Between nations in terms of economics, politics, and most importantly for the syllabus, law, can present problems for international trade. In this study text, we shall explore the difficulties presented and the solutions created by various international bodies, particularly the U United Nations. So basically, this study text is just saying, this sentence is just telling us that we can know, we can know what are the solutions for the problems for uh, international trade being affected by economics, politics, and uh, the law which we are studying, and the solutions for that provided by international various international bodies, especially the United Nations. Now we can go through the economic systems. The economic systems, that is, fast forward. Economics can be described as the ways in which society decides what to produce, how to produce it, and who to produce it for. Basically, this is the, I think, in uh, social we have learned that law is for the people, by the people, and all that. Oh, same thing. Economic is described as for what to what to produce, how to produce, who to produce it for. So there is nothing uh, so hard to know. You can just remember that social part, like what to produce, who to how to produce, who to produce it for. There are three basic kinds of uh, economic systems. That is planned market and mixed economics. There is planned market and mixed economics. Each individual is involved in economics in providing the salary for himself and his family on a wider scale. Governments are involved in economics for the whole country. There are various types of economic system that might exist in a country that are planned, market and mixed. So from the planned market and mixed, we we'll start with the planned part. A planned economy exists where the decision and choices about resource allocation are made by the government. Money values are attached to resources and to goods and services. 